to show you some electrostatics demonstrations and more importantly, teach you how charge behaves. So what I have here is some rabbit fur, a plastic rod, and then a very simple device. It's made out of metal and you have a very light rod here held on a, on a spindle, so it's free to rotate. But it normally rests as you see. Now, all you need to know about electrostatics at this level is that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. To see a more mathematical basis, see my VODs on the electrostatic triangle. But here, we just want to understand how things work. So, knowing that like charges uh, repel and opposite charges attract, let, let's do a demonstration. So I'm going to charge this rod with the rabbit fur. And now, what's happened is, I've taken negatives, I've taken electrons off the rabbit fur and onto the rod. And now, when I touch the rod to the metal contact on the top, those electrons, I have an excess number of electrons here, well, they want to repel. So they go into the metal, metal's a good conductor, Electri electricity can flow, and they spread out inside. Well, initially this guy was touching, so those, the electrons spread out, they spread out everywhere. But now, this device has also an excess number of electrons. There's too many electrons. Therefore, the extra electrons here, the electrons there, they repel, the rod rotates. So that's why you saw what you saw. Let's just do it again real quick. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm grounding it. I'm touching the top of my finger, basically allowing these extra electrons here to flow into my finger. And now, again, we have a neutral situation. So again, charging by contact, I scrape electrons off the rabbit fur onto the rod, and now I make contact, and you see that you have electrons repelling each other. I want to show you something now that's really pretty neat. It's called charging by induction. I'm going to charge this object without making physical contact between the rod and my electroscope. Now, first I want to point out something you probably noticed on your own in the last segment. As I bring the rod close, you'll notice that it repels away. I'm not making physical contact. Charge is not moving. What's happening is the excess electrons up here are repulsing the electrons in the object downward. Thus, you have excess of electrons down here, and they repel. And I can prove that because when I pull the rod away, it goes back to normal, I bring it close, there's a repulsion. Great. Now, let's permanently charge this object, so I'm going to ground it real quick. Let's permanently charge this object by induction. So let's, here's the process. Charge the rod, bring it close, but not make contact, and now, without making, I attach this wire, ah, let me get some more charge here. So I bring it close, I attach the wire, and now I'm going to ground the wire so that charge can flow out through the wire and into me. And now I'll let go of the ground, pull the rod away, and you'll see that it has charge. And that's because this guy pushed the electrons down. When I made contact with the wire, they were free to, free to flow out through me. And now it has a net positive charge, and the like positive charges repel, and the rod's at an angle. That's called charging by induction. Now, I want to show you one last thing that is just pretty cool, and it has to do with the polar nature of water. Now, water is two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. And the hydrogen carry more of the positive and the oxygen more of the negative. And because it's in liquid form, the 
the atoms, or sorry, the molecules are free to rotate. So what's going to happen is, well, you'll see. Notice that the water is bending towards the rod. See how the water bends towards the rod? The charged rod polarizes the water molecules. They rotate around to become polarized, and then you get the attraction. 